well, how much I miss just having fun on the day to day, you know, yeah. like how many times do I wait? And I'm just, I'm like excited to just go do something and enjoy myself while I'm doing it. Not because I'm getting more fit or I'm getting more money or I'm advancing my career or I'm learning a hard skill, but because I'm enjoying my time. Yeah. And that's, that's like, so it's, a shame how rare that's become. And I think going forward, that's going to be a big part of like shaping, you know, what I'm interested in and who I want to collaborate with and people that I want to bring into my life or yeah. um, opportunities that I pursue, whether that's professional or musical or whatever. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, how much fun is this actually, is this actually going to be? Cause yeah, it's, it gets, um, it wears you down, you know, when mm -hmm. you're not fired up to do stuff. I mean, stuff that you know you should be doing is one thing, but, stuff that you just kind of want to be doing and fall into yep. is a whole different thing whole different yep. thing my name is Dooley, and you're listening to the real you thoughts ideas and perspectives from the ordinary in all of us yeah, i was gonna ask is that is it looped in with uh with pocket change at all so yeah i'm kind of doing it like in partnership with pocket change some of the stuff we're trying to focus on with pocket change is people being able to actually share more of their authentic self in a more meaningful way and so yeah that's where too, I was like, this is my style of doing that. Like even posting via yeah, things like via yeah, social platforms, sometimes it still feels too confined or condensed. And so yeah. I was like, ah, if I'm going to do that, this is my authentic way of sharing a more natural self of just being who I am. Um, and yeah, being comfortable with being vulnerable and just, yeah. I don't know. I figure it's not, it's one of those things. Like even two years ago, dude, me talking on a camera was like, Oh, like I'd totally freak no, out. Not going to happen. I'm, yeah. yeah I've so much evolved forward. So it's kind of like, like in that thing too, of that self growth of, Hey, I got to be comfortable putting myself out there. Why not just kind of do it? <laughs> yeah. Just kind of started the pro it's, um, it's funny. Like why, how that becomes such a hurdle sometimes it's like, I, I kind of know what I want to do and I know relatively what I'm interested, in, but like, how do I just get the ball rolling? And I think that there's, you know, as like you've gotten older, you think you kind of realize like there's no good way ever to start anything, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, and, and if you wait until you, you think you're fully prepared, then you've probably lost the good window to go ahead and get started on some of that stuff. So yeah, I appreciate you just diving in and doing that. And man, I wish I had the, I wish, I mean, I, I do, it's a, it's a matter of organization and, and choice and stuff, but I wish I had the, the, the you know, discipline to just kind of go out and start that. So yeah, I love, I love that you're doing with who, who have you chatted with so far? Um, I mean, a handful of people, some of which are just kind of some more closer friends, some other um, people doing startup stuff. Like if you know, Gertie Harris or Anna Zespau also went to DU a little older. Um, I think Anna's Anna's name sounds familiar. She does the Hooch Pooch company, like hard kombucha. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know, but her and then um, talked to some kind of other people, messing around with music stuff. But uh, also this one guy, Kevin, um, who is, it ended up being awesome. We like, I randomly DM'd on Instagram via a pocket change thing because he writes a ton of poetry and he puts out a poem every day. And so he's got like 4,000 something poems. And so I like DM'd him just when we were looking for people who might be interested in using pocket change. And he instantly responded with kind of this philosophical thought on something and electricity. And then I totally got what he was saying. So then I went in on it. And then a couple just DMs later, I'm like, yo, you want to be on my podcast? <laughs> so I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so I had no idea who he was yeah. and I was still hadn't. and then we ended up chatting and it was just a crazy, like cool conversation. You got to hear his life stuff and um some of the thoughts he had out in the world and poetry and all this stuff. So it's literally that's the exact point of it is now I've got like a new friend who's into philosophy and poetry and just was able to open my mind in certain ways. And then also I was it's just fun. I don't know. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, hey, my doorbell just rang. Do you mind if I go check and see that really fast? Go grab it. <laughs> okay. Missionaries, Dooley. Missionaries. <laughs> Got to do it. Doing, doing the Lord's work out there. You know? It's so funny because at first you're kind of gone. And then, and then I hear you start talking. I'm like, because you're still on the <laughs> thing. I catch the... Yeah, like, yeah. That's funny. Yeah, yeah the, door, the doorbell itself is just an interesting... Like if you get the doorbell ring, who in the hell 
Isn't that funny how that changed? Like, I think it used to start as like, you know, what, what sort of honored guests might we be able to welcome into our home. And then now, you know, in 2022, it's like, get, unless you have something amazing, I need you off my porch right now. (laughs) (laughs) So it's like scary. You're like, where, who's going to go get, who's going to talk to him? Like, (laughs) (laughs) what what do they want? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, It's, it's, it's a bummer how that's, um, I think the approach to conversation has has kind of shifted in that direction. I, I um, unfortunately, I think like sales and marketing evolution over the last thirty or forty years has really contributed to that. But yeah, it's basically unfortunately how you've got to like lead every every inquiry, which is like at the end of the day, like okay, you're you're talking to me because you want something out of this. So like, what do you want out of this? And, yeah. Uh, being able to frame stuff as being like mutually beneficial is a, mm. is a huge, is a huge skill. Yeah. So that's, yeah, a, that's man, a, that's an intense kind of uh, idea though. Cause I actually feel that a lot myself too, with, you know, doing startup stuff or wanting to share things with people or also maybe there is a need for, we need funding or this, or we need usage or um, yeah, I've kind of dealt with that relationship myself of like, am I, just talking to someone because I want something from it or like, and it's, it's usually like, no, I want to actually talk with people um, about the idea we're doing or whatever it is. But uh, it's almost actually, I think brought kind of like a sense of anxiety into, into the, my own world for a bit, or it did more. So I think I'm more comfortable with it now, but yeah. yeah, like every time you're talking with someone, it's like an opportunity or something like that. I mean, it's, if you were to go through the Rolodex of people that you that you keep in your life, like how many of those relationships are, are based on something that's transactional. Right. And then how many of those relationships are based on something that's, that's like much more fluid. And, Mm -hmm. you know, the reason that you become friends with somebody when you're really young is Mm -hmm. entirely different than the reason why you become friends with somebody when, when you're older, you know, and, and so much of it has to do with, you know, timing and lifestyle and, and, Mm. you know, do do we, you know, proximity, like, can I go see you often enough? Right. And versus Mm. like a true kind of connection. I think, uh, um, whoever that author was that wrote that book about those boys that, that find the the dead body. Oh my gosh. One of my middle school teachers is going to kill me for not knowing that, but the kayak book or no. Red kayak. No, 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 no. But anyways, the the quote is basically that nobody has friends like they do when they're twelve, and I think it's super true. Like you mm. just you have a level of connection with somebody when you're just you want to be friends just for the sake of being friends, you know. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It, There's part, like part of that happened in in college too, but there's also like a bit of a social scene, and there's a you know more of like a. Um, you know, prestige kind of thing that comes yeah. into relationships in college. Um, I, I think for a lot of people, not, mm-hmm. not everybody, but yeah, man, when you're just, you're in the throes of youth then it's like the most pure relationships you've ever had. And you're just yeah. like, you're just boys with your boys. Cause you yeah. kind of just want to be, and you, yeah. <laughs> you get along. I, and the, I, we're literally I do the miss first, that. Yeah. The first combo or uh, podcasting that I put out, the title of it was trust your childlike instinct. Um, the yeah. Second, like, thing of it. And it was really it's on this exact thing. We had a whole conversation about like when you actually like the childlike gut feeling towards something is sometimes and it comes, it can come off as bullying. I don't like that person or like, Oh no, that's my best friend. But it, it actually leans into something. Um, and too, with, with music or whatever it is, but as a child, you don't have these stories that you're either telling yourself or that you've been um, programmed to believe. Hence your right. reaction and your pursuit come out so much more like deeply authentic without even knowing what authenticity is. Totally. Um, yeah. Totally. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I'm, I'm huge on that too. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's super funny how that, how that works. And as you, you know, get more like one of the things I'm thinking about, um, you know, I've got a, I have a, have a day job, right. And it's a, a good one and it's pretty lucrative, but, it's not a lot of fun. And I was thinking like, you know, how, how, what, what, how much I miss just having fun on the day to day, you know, like how many times do I wait? And I just am like excited to just go do something and enjoy myself while I'm doing it. Not because I'm getting more fit or I'm getting more money or I'm advancing my career or I'm learning a hard skill, but because I'm enjoying my time. 
Yeah. And that's, that's like, so it's a shame how rare that's become. And I think going forward, that's going to be a big part of like shaping, you know, what I'm interested in and who I want to collaborate with and people that I want to bring into my life or yeah. um, opportunities that I pursue, whether that's professional or musical or whatever. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, how much fun is this actually, is this actually going to be? Cause yeah, it's, it gets, um, it wears you down, you know, when mm-hmm. you're not fired up to do stuff. I mean, stuff that you know you should be doing is one thing, but stuff that you just kind of want to be doing and fall into yeah. is a whole different thing, whole different yeah. thing.